I've been sewing for 15 years, but in the first half of those years, I really wasn't enjoying sewing as much as I could have, and my sewing quality wasn't the best either. If I were to start now, here are seven things that I would be doing differently. So number one, if I were to start sewing now, I would spend more time learning about what silhouettes and colors fit me. So whenever you're buying a ready-to-wear garment, you go to the store and you have a possibility to try on different dresses, different shapes, different garments. And when you find a garment that fits you well, you get to choose from several different colors and see which one works best for you. However, in sewing, when you're making things from scratch, you have to have a good imagination of how the final result will look on you. And it's actually something that I've struggled a lot in the beginning. Style is something that does not come naturally for me. I had to learn about it. I learned about colors, about tones, about different shapes that fit me. Now I'm very happy with my wardrobe selections most of the time, but it took me a while to learn this because in the beginning, I would look at the fabric, the fabric itself looked nice, I would pick up a nice pattern, I would combine them together, make a garment, put it on, and it would not look good on me and it would be something that I would spend a lot of time making, I would spend money on fabrics and supplies and I end up with an item that I don't want to wear because it does not look good on me. So definitely I would spend time learning what fits me and what doesn't. What helped me personally was the video from Alexandra's Girly Talk about color theory. That video provides a lot of great information and if you want to learn more about this I will link it in the description box. Second thing that I would do differently is I would learn pattern making as soon as possible. So as many of us I don't have a standard figure. The top body part and the bottom body part are two different sizes plus my waist point is lower and my hip point is lower than the average. I love making and wearing fitted sheathed dresses but with these adjustments fitting a ready-made pattern was very very difficult and and this is something that I struggled for many years. And it wasn't until I learned the basics of pattern making that all of a sudden it clicked in my head and now I can look at the pattern, I know what I need to measure, how that line has to correlate with my own body and I can make the adjustments easier. So definitely if you're struggling with fit as well, I recommend learning at least the basics of pattern making and it will be the game changer in fitting. Number three that I would do differently is I would invest either time or money into getting a quality knowledge. I learned to sew on my own, but after several years, I felt like I reached a ceiling and my skills were not evolving anymore and I needed external help to go past a certain quality level. This is why I enrolled into sewing school and at that school I had a phenomenal teacher and with her guidance, within like two first weeks of sewing, I made more progress than I did on my own in the last several years. So I know that the going to sewing school is definitely, definitely not for everyone, but I would either look for a mentor that can help me or I would spend time finding good quality resources online and finding teachers that really know what they're talking about and had good skills and can navigate me into the right direction direction when it comes to sewing. By the way, this is a little bit off topic, but it's on point with this point. Uh, I've been recently playing with the idea of doing group mentorship for those who want to start sewing, but I don't really know if this is something that you would be interested. In. So let me know in the comment section down below, what do you think about this idea? And if this is something that would be interesting for you to participate in. So number four, what I would do differently this time around is I would record more of what I make. So now in the last like five years I've been creating content online uh, and I have this huge library of things that I made throughout those five years. Even if I don't have that garment physically anymore I can look back at the photos and see how it looked, what techniques I used, how my style and how my skills evolved through time. However I do not have any of my first makes and this is something that I regret. I wish I could look back at least in photos or take those first garments and see what I did there, how my skills evolved, you know. This would be very
very nice to have and definitely if I were to start over now I would start taking photos or keeping my first mix and by taking photos I don't mean posting it on social media posting so on social media is definitely not for everybody but it is for your own perspective and keeping those photos to yourself of your makes will help you throughout the time looking back and seeing how you have involved and how you've grown by the way today I'm wearing a dress made by my own pattern Julie I love this silhouette of the dress I already made three of these dresses and I'm planning on making a fourth one because I just love this pattern so much so if you would like to make your own version of Julie dress I will link down in the description box my Etsy pattern shop where you will find this pattern the fifth thing that I would do differently is I would make constant schedule for sewing so for all those 15 years of sewing my life has changed tremendously from from graduating from school then from university starting career starting family so lots of big life changes and sometimes what would happen I would completely stop sewing for months even years at the time and the thing is when you're in motion when you're sewing regularly you are enjoying it more and your skills are evolving but once you stop and then pick up after months or years it kind of takes time to get back to that quality level to really remember everything that you learned if I were to start now I would create a schedule that works for me uh, that brings me joy in sewing even through big life changes I'm not talking about sewing every day for an hour I think that's very difficult to maintain depending on the life situation that you're currently in but Try to find something that works for you. Maybe it's an hour at Sunday evening. Something that works for you. It doesn't have to be lots of time. It doesn't have to be very often, but try to find time for sewing on regular basis if this is something that you enjoy doing because that's a me time. I enjoy sewing and whenever I find time or make time for sewing I'm always much happier so definitely a regular sewing schedule is something that I would do right from the start number six is a mistake that I did and I see a lot of beginners do to this day is stressing about the machine whenever I'm speaking about sewing machines I try to emphasize on my message that the sewing machine is a tool and you are in control of the sewing quality and it depends on how much time you're putting how much effort you're putting into making something but that was not always the case for me in the beginning I used very cheap machines that weren't that great and I would go online at the time the social media wasn't as it is now but there were blogs I would go to blogs and I would see these bloggers using fancy sewing machines uh, sewing in these huge sewing spaces using lots of different tools and I had none of these things and in my mind at the time I was looking and thinking I cannot sew at high quality because I don't have these things in reality once I gained more experience more knowledge I understand that to sew at high quality you actually don't need a lot of things there is just minimal setup that is needed to sew at good level and this is something that I wish I understood from the start and the last thing that I would do differently and the thing that applies lies not only to sewing but more topics in life is following your own journey so again I will talk from my own experience back in those days when blogs were really popular some of the bloggers would do these challenges and would share their journeys of how they are stop buying clothing for a year and making everything themselves another blogger would start a challenge sewing everything from bras lingerie athletic wear etc etc and in my mind I would look at those bloggers their journeys and I would apply it to my own life even if this is not the journey that I want to personally take on sewing the thing is I never wanted to make lingerie or athletic wear and that mindset would rob me of a lot of sewing joy and I would just completely stop sewing what would happen was I would want to make this beautiful gorgeous dress that I actually don't need but I'm very interested in making it but what I need is a tank top 
What I don't want to make is a tank top but because I was applying everyone else's journey and experiences to my own journey I thought I need to make a tank top and because I didn't want to make a tank top I would just not sew at all so that comparing my journey with others and applying their experiences to my own really robbed me from a lot of joy of sewing and it's completely my own fault now I understand that what works for others may not work for me and I really put a lot of effort figuring out what I like what I want to make and how my sewing journey has to look. Over the years I've become very intentional of what I'm following online and what content I'm consuming. One example that I can give, I used to follow a lot of designers that have their own ateliers and creating couture garments. Whenever their beautiful creations would pop on my Instagram feed, I would look at it and think I will never sew at this level or I'm not as creative as these designers and it would really bring me down. But the thing is, I don't aspire to sew at this level. I don't aspire to create couture garments. So why am I feeling bad? What I did was unfollow a lot of these creators uh, because this content was just not bringing me joy. And now I'm really conscious about who I'm following online and the content that I'm consuming. And this applies not only to sewing, but many, many areas in life. So I know that this sounds controversial coming from a content creator, but I do encourage you to think who you're following online and how their content is making you feel. So this is it. These are seven things that I would do differently if I were to start sewing now. Leave a comment down below with your experience and what you would do differently if you were to start over. Leave a like on the video if you like this video and leave a dislike if you didn't because it's a good indication for me whether or not I should continue creating these type of videos. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time. Bye!